everyone, it's Brittany and welcome back to Brittany Unplugged. And as you can tell by the title of this video, today we're going to be talking about the four bad habits that you need to completely erase in 2021. So I hope this video helps you. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now, I know it's been over a month since we've gotten into the new year. I'm pretty sure there's a number of you that have been wanting to do New Year's resolutions. People have been coming up with plans and a bunch of things to really make this year the best year possible for them. But then I know that there are a lot of bad habits that we all have that we may not even realize that we have, but it can really be damaging to us in the long run. The following four things are bad habits you need to completely erase this year. Now, the first bad habit that you need to erase is self-deprecating. This is the process of giving yourself extreme criticism, like it's even worse than constructive criticism in the sense that this type of criticism that you give yourself is not going to help you in the long run. You know, with um, constructive criticism, it is going to help you eventually when you are objective with yourself you give yourself constructive criticism saying i need to improve in this area xyz but with self-deprecation it's more you sitting there like i'm so ugly i'm not intelligent i'm not smart almost in such a situation where like someone can actually come to you and say that oh my gosh you look very pretty let's say you're at a party and then someone comes and they compliment you and they're like oh you look so pretty and stuff like that and then you just say, no, I, I, I'm not really that pretty. I mean, I'm kind of ugly. I just kind of like threw this on or whatever. So the moment you make those comments like that, it is almost an indication that you are not happy with yourself. And the person who is complimenting you will A, probably never compliment you again because they know how you'll respond. B, they'll think you're fishing for attention. Or C, they may actually empathize with you and see that you really are insecure. But a lot of the times, it's one of the first two options. So do not normalize putting yourself on a pedestal that is below everybody else. Don't normalize saying these bad proclamations on, upon yourself because you end up believing those things and you end up not achieving your fullest potential because you've always proclaimed that, no, I'm not good enough. I'm ugly, I'm a couch potato, I'm lazy, I procrastinate, I do all of those things. So words have so much power and we don't even realize to what extent that power holds. So you need to be very careful about the things that you proclaim about yourself because those things can really affect you in the long run. Don't normalize looking down upon yourself because you are the one person that is supposed to build yourself up. You are in charge of building your self-esteem up. You are in charge of validating yourself before getting validation from anybody else. The moment you don't allow yourself to be self-assured, no one else will see you as someone who is self-assured. You treat yourself the way you allow others to treat you. The way you treat yourself is a representation of how you want others to treat you. Whether you may like it or not, that's the hard truth. You need to make sure that you treat yourself in a manner where other people will see you and they will respect you. Do not self-deprecate. This year, don't make it a year of saying, I can't do this, I can't do this. Oh, I'm so ugly. Oh my gosh, I can't do this. Oh my gosh, I'm not skilled in this. Stop saying you're not, you're not, you're not, and see what you can actually do about it. See how you can actually take initiative moving forward. And stop normalizing self-deprecating because it's really not doing any good. And I know sometimes we can fall into the trap of doing that. I myself am guilty of doing that, but it's really a bad habit that we all need to stop. We need to stop invalidating ourselves. We need to stop thinking that we need to stop thinking like talking bad about ourselves, looking down on ourselves is something that should be normalized, that should be fine, that should be acceptable by society because it should not be acceptable. Now, the second bad habit that you need to break this year in 2021 is you need to stop tolerating people all in the name of protecting your peace. Please, please, please never forget that you are in control of the amount of people that have access to you and you are in control of the level of access that those people have to you. If your friend has wronged you, if your significant other has wronged you, you need to call them out on it. This business of saying, I'm going to like, you know, I'm going to tolerate them just to protect the peace. You're not protecting your peace because you are staying within the energy that caused your peace to be damaged in the first place. And that is the T. Now, the moment you've reached a point in a relationship where you feel like you are now tolerating the person, it is because you are now just holding on to either the memories, the experiences, or something that they have on you. You're not actually holding on to the person because you genuinely care. You're not holding on to them because you genuinely care about their well being and you know, you care about the bond. That that you guys have the actual connection that brings you guys together in the friendship or in the relationship you are just holding on to them number one in the sake of creating peace the only reason why keeping quiet and tolerating someone creates peace is because there is no room for conflict because you are keeping your feelings locked in and locked away inside of you now you see the thing is that builds up over time your anger your resentment your disappointment will build up over time because you've kept quiet about it. You need to normalize speaking up. You need to normalize saying how you feel, especially if this person is important to you. If you have reached the point where you're now tolerating them, you ask yourself if you genuinely need to be in that space where you really need to be tolerating a person when there are probably other people, other friends of yours that actually care about you. 
the moment you put yourself in a position where you have to tolerate people then you end up settling for less it's almost like you're fine with not getting the bare minimum because clearly the person wasn't meeting your expectations they weren't meeting your needs in that friendship because everyone's needs are different so the person probably wasn't meeting your needs they probably did something but you keeping quiet and staying friends with them or staying on the same level of connection with them after they've wronged you for the sake of creating peace is only damaging to you because it gives them leeway to act however they've been acting because they haven't been told that how they're acting is something that's really not comfortable with you. It's something that's out of order with you. So tolerating someone in order to protect peace needs to stop because you end up wasting so much energy faking your happiness faking that you care faking and you end up you may say that no no, no i care about them and stuff so i'm just tolerating them i'm putting up with them but, but then eventually it's going to show through your energy that you're just tolerating them it's going to show through the way that you act and then you may end up subconsciously acting like you don't like the person you may end up subconsciously acting like you genuinely don't care you may end up subconsciously acting like you are a heartless person because your heart is genuinely not in that relationship so as a result it manifests through your actions and then the person on the receiving end of that energy of yours will then think that you are the problem when in actual reality they are the problem don't let it reach a point where you are now beginning to act like you are the problem and they are the source of it in the first place. Communicate how you're feeling. Normalize walking away from toxicity. Normalize walking away from a friendship that is not doing you any good, where you're not benefiting from it, where you guys are kind of, where you're not elevating each other to do better, where you genuinely just are drifting away and you're going your separate ways. It's okay for friendships to end. And if the person does you wrong, it's okay to confront the person. And if they react in a manner which you're not okay with, it's okay to walk away from that conversation or to walk away from them. You need to protect your peace first. Now, communicating how you're feeling with someone will not add oil to the fire because it all depends on how they respond. If they respond in a way where that either gaslights you, either manipulates you, it either just adds, it adds some kind of spice that doesn't need to be there then that is kind of how you'd say, oh, it's adding oil to the fire. It all depends on who you're dealing with. If you go to someone and you tell them that this is how I've been feeling and you have an honest, mature adult conversation with them and tell them that, look, you did this and I didn't like it. If they react in a very mature way and they're like, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize that I hurt you in that way. I'm, I apologize for making you feel that way. Then that's not adding oil to the fire because you've had a mutual conversation and it is finished there. So it depends on who you're dealing with. Sometimes confrontation is hard. The reason why we choose to tolerate people, not say anything, and we just continue to stay in the circumstances is because confrontation is hard. Change is difficult. So we choose to conform to what we're already in. But the more you conform, the more your peace, your peace is being damaged because you are not protecting that boundary around you because you're allowing that negative energy to step within that boundary. Now, this brings me to the third bad habit that we need to let go of in 2021. And this is questioning yourself. Literally, when you are not following your gut, when your gut is telling you something, but then you're thinking the opposite. A lot of the times when we question things, it's because our gut has already come to a decision about a certain circumstance. Our gut is already telling us what to do, but then our mind mind, our soul, our body come into play and then it's all of these things intertwined and then we don't actually realize what our gut is telling us and then we end up questioning things. A lot of the times when we question things, the answer is already made up but then you just kind of need further clarification or you genuinely don't know what to do. That's why you end up questioning things. So instead of saying, what if I start that business? Just start it. Instead of saying, Oh, what if I just, what if I just, you know, start that YouTube channel? Just start it. If you say, okay, is it, should I walk away from that friendship? Should I stay in that friendship? If you feel the fact that you're already asking the question, should I walk away is probably a clear indicator that maybe that's, that's the best option for you. Or if not, maybe having an honest conversation with the person. But if you feel like a lot of the times we don't know what our gut is telling us, but you feel it deep down. That's your gut telling you that you need to make that decision. So the moment you start questioning certain things, it's because your mind is coming up to a decision that your gut has already made, but then you're really just trying to make sure that it is the correct decision because you don't want to end up, you know, affecting the choices that you make in the future. Now, the reason why you shouldn't question yourself too much and you should just act is because the more you question yourself, the more time that will be taken for you to actually take action on that thing. It'll be so prolonged but that by the time that opportunity comes, then you already would have missed out on it because you were like, oh my gosh, why did I just do this? Or if you have a really important decision to make, if it's a life, if it's a life threatening decision to make, or it's a decision that will probably change your life for the better. If you take a very long time to come up with a decision because you keep questioning, oh, what if I do this? Why should I do this? 
why would I do this? We don't have the answers to all the questions. We don't know what will happen in the future. You just need to go with what you think is the most mature thing possible. Of course, in the moment, you may not know what the best thing to do is, but eventually the, your options will weigh out and you'll realize what to pick. The more you question yourself, then the more time will pass you by and you'll just continue staying in the same place because you're not actually taking action. Sometimes you just need to take a risk and whatever happens, happens because part of taking risks means that you're going to learn from that experience. Don't just sit there and say, okay, what if? Um, what if I go there? I mean, should I not go there? I mean, um, I don't know. Maybe should I, maybe, maybe I should do this. Does she really say this to me? Does she like me? Does she not like this? Does she not like me? Um, should I say something to her? How she acted? All of those things. You just keep asking yourself a bunch of questions and you really end up sitting there in the same place, just asking questions, but not actually going to seek the answers. Sometimes seek the answers before, you know, the questions pile up and they become too many because the more you start questioning yourself, the more you start overthinking. As a certified overthinker, I can guarantee you that you will start overthinking things the more you question yourself too much. So just stand up, put one foot in front of the other, and just do whatever you have to do instead of questioning all the time. So 2020 might have been a year where you were probably questioning a lot of things. Or maybe 2021, the things that you question, if you want to start a business, if you want to do a bunch of things, then literally just start this year. Just let 2021 be the year that you start despite the difficult circumstances that a lot of people may be in. If circumstances see fit where you can start whatever you wanted to start, just do it. Now the fourth and final bad habit that we all need to let go of, and this is my personal favorite, is you need to stop choosing violence. Choosing violence doesn't necessarily have to be you going into a physical altercation with someone. I mean, that it does involve that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. You can either pick a fight with your boyfriend, pick a fight with your best friend, pick a fight with your girlfriend, pick a fight with your parents, or you can go on Twitter and post something that is very provocative. Or you can do you can post something on Instagram that will like spark a conversation, a very controversial, heavy conversation. So a lot of the times with choosing violence, you put yourself in a position where you spark debate, you spark some form of havoc that will cause people to kind of have a lot of uncertainty and people will be very unsettled because of different opinions, different viewpoints and stuff like that. So you need to know that with everything that you do, there's going to be a reaction. The things that you touch, there's a reaction between the surface and your hand. The people you meet, there's a reaction. They create first impressions of you. Yourself, you react to different things. You react to so many things and everything is a reaction to something. So you need to know that the moment you start something that didn't really need to be started in the first place, there's going to be some kind of reaction because it is something that is out of the ordinary. It's something that is not in the daily routine. So, you, But you just went and you intervened and then you just went in the middle of it and just started something that really was not usually started. So if you post something, if you post a particular tweet and then you say something that's very that you know people have strong p opinions about and then people respond to you just know that when you post something you should expect a response from it don't then say that no i am the owner of my own life no 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 people don't have the right to come and talk to me why did you post it in the first place that type of thing and of course you are entitled to your own opinion of course every and it, you do whatever you please and stuff like that but then just know that whatever you do if you're going to wake up and choose violence you're going to get a response from it and do not be surprised by the response so just make sure you don't go searching for don't go searching for drama don't go adding spice to things that really it's when it's really unnecessary so make sure that this year you just focus on yourself and don't focus on starting drama here starting drama there because drama dies down drama is very temporary it's not something that's long lasting so don't go and start temporary temporary things with people when you know that it's really just not going to last so do not choose violence so i hope this video helped you and i hope all of these things i mentioned help you and you'll take them into your stride as well as always don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and hit the bell to be notified when i post new videos stay safe everyone god bless you all bye